Hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, this is my very first video, so it's okay, I am also new here. It's been highly requested since I started uploading shorts for you guys that everyone wants to see how I do my application and my prep. The whole purpose of this video is to make sure that the girlies understand that it is possible to have your client's nails come back after four and five weeks fully intact. I always make sure I start by pushing up cuticles to open up the nail plate completely for myself, and then I'm going in straight with this flame bit. You want to make sure that you're always rotating the flame bit according to your client's anatomy. I will hold it horizontally when I'm up in the middle of that equinechium area and then I will hold it vertically when I am going along the sides. Also please remember that we are using feather hands meaning that we are thinking light thoughts, okay? We do not want to be heavy handed with this process at all because 100% it is possible to put a hole through your client's nail plate. While working on this area i am constantly going forward and in reverse to make sure that i am getting every single thing off of the nail plate of course keeping those hand movements nice and light because our tool should work more for us than we're working it Next, we're sanding down the nail plate, and by sanding down, that's very dramatic. I say that very loosely. Do not sand down your client's nail plates, okay? This should be a very light-handed feathering motion. We don't want to burn our client's nail plates, and we also do not want to cause rings of fire, okay? That's a no. That's out. I just have to jump in because look at how beautiful this is. I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a blank canvas for a nail tech. If you ever put a little too much glue, my favorite trick is just to swipe the excess across the nail plate and then just apply it back and then forward, if that makes sense. So I'm sliding it back and then I lay it forward. Then I squeeze the sides to make sure that it's nice and tight. And you know, if you get any excess glue on the sides, it's all right. Just make sure you peel it back. We don't want any skin filed off. That's not, that's not fun. Moving on to our shaping and filing, I am doing this straight up to make sure that I have a nice crispy edge. I always flip my client's shapes over, especially when it comes to square or coffin, just to make sure that I am seeing it from all angles, especially how my clients see it. pre-shape for the square involves shaping this also dead straight up and onto the sidewall, keeping it very parallel to that, and then coming at an angle from underneath to make sure that we don't have any weird dips in the sidewall and everything is nice and straight. Keep in mind that when you are blending in the tip, you don't have to excessively also blend your client's nail plate as you're blending the tip if you're picking up what I'm putting down. All of my beads in this video are going to be in the size medium. I'm gonna keep things really small and organized for y'all that are just learning how to apply acrylic to make it seem less intimidating. If anyone needs a liquid to powder ratio video, I can also separately record and upload that so that way you have a little bit more knowledge on what I mean to pick up a medium-sized bead. Here I am working with my first medium bead, keeping things really nice and light, and then cutting off the edge to see how much more excess I need to remove from this nail. At this point, you are going to apply a little bit more pressure just to make sure that you can properly maneuver and mold this first bead to make everything really nice and even all the way down to the edge of the nail. I am going to specifically use the belly of my brush to get that really clean, free edge. Now that we did our first bead, we're moving right into that second bead. The next two or three beads are also going to be medium sized, but I promise they're going to blend out exactly as they need to. Once I've organized the sides of this bead, I make sure that I tap tap and then I blend out. Cause I have, it's not a home with no one 
Now that we've approached the cuticle bead area, I am going to add my first stress bead and this one is relatively small and I just work this from side to side on the nail plate making sure that my coverage is prioritized. When applying your cuticle beads, I like to keep them relatively small and I will use the tip of my brush to lightly guide it to the cuticle edge and then I will blend it out. When I'm sealing the sides around the bead, I am only using the tip of my brush. You don't want to use the full, you don't, you just don't want to wedge your full brush in there. Okay, just don't wedge it in there. Just, just be dainty. Use the tip and, you know, feather her in, shimmy it in there. But it really does not take that much pressure. Here I am applying a little filler bead and I keep them really, really tiny. This just really helps my OCD and just accentuates the overall body of the nail. And I really get a very clear visual of how I'm going to carve out this nail. Rome was not built in a day, y'all. So I am here making sure that all of my beads line up where they need to be. The real test to know your acrylic is dry is giving it a tap. It should give a really nice clicking sound. When I'm filing my side walls, I'm making sure to keep everything incredibly parallel. When I'm filing the top, I really like to find my apex area by keeping it straight on to mark where the middle of that is and then carving out my nail from there. Using my 5-in-1 bit from V Beauty Pure, I am going underneath the snail to really snatch the structure of it and give it that really sexy C curve. With that same bit, I am going to be carving out my apex area because I did feel like it was a little bit too bulky in the back, so I am angling it in the position of where I feel that her apex should start and finish. bringing out the sanding band because if you're like me I do use a coarser bit just to really break down the bulk a little bit quicker so I am using my sanding band just to make sure that she is smooth By the time I am done buffing this nail, it will be absolutely smoother than a fresh car wax, okay? Listen to me very closely. I make sure that my nails are completely buffed out before I start any nail work, just because I am setting myself up for success. Even 
underneath the nail gets buffed, okay? Those little scraggly pieces gotta go too. Everything gets sprayed down immediately with some swipe and then wiped away to reveal a beautiful canvas. Look at her go, look at her go. I decided to pick up some gel polish and show you guys exactly how I would map my Frenchie on a longer style nail. The gel polish I'm using is from V Beauty Pure and it's the shade color 045. Holy grail to live by is this upside down A shape. Okay, try it out and tell me what you think. Once you have your little A shape, you're then gonna start your little swoops, okay? Start to swoop right into the center and then you're just gonna go back and forth like a little seesaw until you have a perfect little smile line just smiling right back at you. Everything after that is so easy. You're literally just taking the bottle brush and just painting everything in. This was actually a pop-off set if you didn't notice. All angles are a slay, but it's okay because we ended up giving my girl a cute little gel manicure just for being a trooper and hanging out with us. Let me know what you guys think about my first video. I had so much fun making this and 100% I plan on making more.